Hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. With your host, Kenneth Bacor. This is episode 10, recorded on July 30th, 2019. This episode of the EV Revolution Show is sponsored by File Sanctuary. Need a great web host for your business? Need to get email at yourdomain.com? They provide professional, feature-rich web and email hosting for any project you have in mind. Get started today at filesanctuary.net forward slash cloud and save 10% with promo code EVREVSHOW. Hey, well, yeah, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. This is episode 10 already. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host. Hopefully you guys are watching me a bit on the uh, video side, but I love to do these audio podcasts because I can always reach out and get a special guest. And today my special guest is Mr. Michael Betancourt here with autotrader.ca in Toronto. He's the managing editor for autotrader. Hi, Michael. How are you? Hi, Ken. Good, thanks. Good. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to chat with me for a half an hour, 45 minutes or so. You and I had met, I think, at a, at a vendor function, a manufacturer function and we talked uh, that it would be cool to kind of get you on the show and get a different perspective of the EV landscape. Yeah, I think it was at an EV society meeting, wasn't it? That's true, yeah, it could have been even that because we're we're all out there evangelizing, right? And you were telling me uh, just a little bit before um, about some of your history, which we'll go into it because you are a pioneer in the EV industry and I, I didn't realize that at the time. Um, so, you know, let, let's start with that. So before, you know, before we get into, you know, who auto trade is, what you do and some of the analysis, mm-hmm. uh, give me a little bit about your experience with EVs in your pioneer role. Well, it's funny being an auto journalist. It's uh, there's a lot of auto enthusiasts in this business. And obviously we all love speed and we all love cars. Yeah. And that's why we write about cars and we love reviewing cars. And it's, it's, you know, we really, a lot of us have, have gas in our veins. So when I went, we were actually one of the first folks in Ontario to buy a Nissan Leaf uh, way back in late 2011. Yeah. And I got a lot of strange looks. <laughs> and a lot of my colleagues that, that said, really, you actually bought yeah. one of those things? Exactly. And uh, so, so that was for my wife. But we were looking for a hatchback that was uh, relatively inexpensive to run, mm-hmm. fuel efficient, and comfortable. And you can't get much more comfortable than total silence right. and much more fuel efficient than not using any fuel whatsoever. Exactly. So it was, it would seem like something that would also be uh, intriguing professionally mm-hmm. in that, hey, let's see what these things are all about. Mm-hmm. Uh, because obviously that was, a, that was a totally different atmosphere back mm-hmm. then. There was very few charging stations around. Nobody all knew what electric vehicles yeah. were. It was, uh, it was literally, we were literally guinea pigs. So the Wild West, basically, as I tell people. But way back then, those uh, pioneering age, it really was, you know, as you said, like you were on your own, got those yep. polarizing stares from people, so, you know, looking at the Gen <laughs> One form, going, "What the heck is that?" <laughs> exactly. That's the yes. That's yeah. the other thing. Uh, a lot of folks didn't think the Nissan Leaf is the best looking right. car right. on the market, and uh, you know what? But we didn't buy it for looks. We really bought it for its uh, its comfort and mm-hmm. sort of its you know its future its future readiness. Really, it's something that uh, you know we were. Uh, both very curious about mm-hmm. and uh, somewhat uh, environmentally conscious. And so we said, you know what, this uh, this could be a fascinating journey. And it was. Nice. And it Excellent. Was. And that led you down. Uh, now, at that time, were you already working for with AutoTrader at the time? Or are you doing so, no, I was, uh, I was yeah. a freelance auto journalist. Uh-huh. I was writing uh-huh. for the Globe and Mail at the yep. time. And uh, so I wrote a multi-part series about what it was like living with the Leaf. Uh, installing the charging station in the garage that was actually probably the most difficult yeah. part was cleaning out the entire garage that we never <laughs> used of all the junk yeah. that was in it getting a, sh- a shed yeah. to put it all in that's right and uh, and really so and then tracking it tracking exactly mm-hmm. how much the electricity uh, would cost us yeah. we had a separate meter oh, uh, okay, at the yeah. time so mm-hmm. we could actually track it uh, yeah. exactly just the fuel use separated from your mm-hmm. fridge and your regular mm-hmm. home use yeah so um, so yeah so that was back in 2011 mm-hmm. and uh, wow. and for we lasted about four and a half almost five years uh, before we traded that in on a Ford C-Max Energy oh nice okay yeah. so so we're on our second EV now and one of these uh, ones we don't hear a lot about because Ford's kind of quiet but uh, good to see you yeah. 
Yes, yes. Well, when they're not uh, when they're not pulling a million pounds worth of cargo yeah, with their new right. electric exactly. uh, pickup trucks, or at least their planned electric pickup trucks. Yeah. So, um, so that's what I find. I mean, a lot of companies they they make a lot of announcements yeah. about future vehicles. I think that was an eye opening one. Absolutely and, uh, was. Yeah. And it was it was encouraging that hey, you know what? They're not just putting out press releases about it. They're mm-hmm. actually researching it. And and yes, although this was kind of a meant to highlight this is coming yeah. it's also uh, shows that ford is serious about it yeah i talked about it just on my last show that went to air a couple of days ago you know it is a pr stunt but hey it gets you know i say it gets eyeballs looking at the ev industry and it gets an audience that normally maybe wouldn't be looking at ev industry you know the pickup yeah. truck crowd and 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 you know some of the the lighter to medium-sized vehicles that people are using and um get them to look at that could be a viable option so it's good to see so mm-hmm. you're a pioneer you, you you still have an ev now do you i do we yeah. still have the ford cms Excellent. energy Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. been uh, eight years now in counting. Wow. So yeah. yeah. So you, yeah, you've done it all. So <laughs> then you came to Auto Trader and maybe tell some of the folks because I have, I do have listeners from all over the place. Maybe tell right. us, uh, you know, who Auto Trader is and what you guys do here. Well, so AutoTrader.ca is the largest automotive marketplace in Canada. Mm-hmm. So uh, we offer new and used vehicles. A lot of folks uh, don't realize that uh, we actually list. Uh, thousands and thousands oh, of yeah. all new uh, vehicles it's just not uh, not a used vehicle site and uh, my role is basically to test drive a lot of these uh, yeah. new vehicles and mm-hmm. assign the test drives to our writers and to talk about hey what's the latest and greatest trends we have news we yeah. have a lot of ev news it's funny you can't separate out these days ev news from regular news That's because right. every car company yeah. is just coming out with regular news and it's all uh, electric related or That's right. at least the vast majority of it is so it's uh, so it's something that uh, we do have a lot of listings and mm-hmm. that's what we're known for but we also have our editorial section where we do new car test drives we do comparison tests we just did a comparison test on uh, three evs yes. uh, couple months ago yeah so. i've been looking yeah. at the site and you, it's, yeah. it's a great source that i look for news and information and again the reviews and you know and, and your opinions on stuff because uh, uh, you do some pretty comprehensive testing which is great so yeah and so really we we really want to help people mm-hmm. all throughout their automotive journey right mm-hmm. so we don't want folks to just come to our site for two months look for their vehicle and then not come back yeah. for another five six ten years however long their next Mm-hmm. car purchase takes mm-hmm. we want to make sure we have information on there that will help them while they own their car looking into their next car how to install a yep. ev charging station and what the pitfalls are to look Excellent. for so we have a lot of those and even what those electric cars will cost you yeah i know that was one of our most popular pieces actually is yep. in the yeah. different provinces mm-hmm. uh, we had someone look into the different utility rates and say mm-hmm. okay this is what it'll cost you to charge oh, nice. a vehicle yeah. in these different provinces and uh, cool. and it was an eye-opener so for you folks that are here in canada I certainly encourage you to check out the the site this is not a, a a plug you guys aren't sponsoring this podcast or anything but you know i appreciate your time and what you guys do it's very valuable information just like a lot of other resources are in the marketplace um and on that ev marketplace so because you you really are a pioneer i'm only a couple of years into this right mm-hmm. i started you know with the model three when it got revealed and then switched over to you know to doing my channel which is covering more of a broader range and global scale um but certainly i've seen a lot of change just in the recent you know two and a half three years but going back i mean and, and how that relates to auto trade, or how have you seen the EV marketplace uh, changed over this time? And how has that impacted your business here? Well, it, uh, it obviously is still a relatively small part of mm-hmm. the business. Yep. It's, uh, it's only 2% it's globally, so. <laughs> it's, and it really is, and yeah. that's, that's reflected in our right. search figures. So it's not, uh, it's not surprising when mm. I think 2% of vehicles last year were uh, plug-in hybrids or, okay. uh, or electric vehicles. So you're consistent vehicles. with the global view. Yeah, right? we're at about, uh, 1.4 percent okay. right yep. now mm-hmm. of the search vehicles uh, on our site mm-hmm. are are electric, and uh, but we are seeing that number rise mm-hmm. as uh, you know, quite a bit. I mean, okay. I remember just looking at the the numbers recently. Mm-hmm. We were 0.001, yeah. and that was that was it. We had the yeah. we had the Volt, we had the Volt on the market, yeah. and we had the Leaf on the yeah. market, and uh, and even for a while they were, when they were all new vehicles, they just there wasn't a lot of listings for them right and so so yeah so now that uh now that the vehicles are starting to come on the used car market now that more and more new cars mm-hmm. are starting to be 
coming onto the market and dealers are getting the idea that hey you know what we uh, we have more and more electrics to offer so let's uh, mm -hmm. let's get them out there those changes those correlation as you mentioned so not only because there's more models and mm -hmm. uh, for folks that don't live in Canada I think this you know this podcast could certainly help because a lot of your numbers will correlate to the rest of the world I mean some countries like Norway and others which are really booming are going to be obviously skewed but when you look at the US you look at some of the other mainstream uh, uh, countries they're very similar from an adoption and from uh, from an uptake so I think some of the information that you provide today is valuable across those those regions um, but certainly from incentives so incentives have been key in helping to spur EV adoption and of course sure. here in Canada I can't ask you about US incentives or others but in Canada we've had provincial incentives for a while on new mm -hmm. uh, we've just had a new newly launched federal incentive earlier this year that hopefully sticks around for a while that has some teeth yeah, to is. it have you mm -hmm. seen a correlation in uptake and in increased searches and, and purchasing uh, uh, especially in provinces a that have incentives and B has the federal one helped in, in the last few months well, it's still a little bit early for yeah. us to see a, a huge difference because it was just May first that it yes. came out. Mm -hmm. So by the time, by the time folks buy their new car, like what we're seeing in the market right now is we're seeing a lot of waiting lists for mm -hmm. some of these vehicles, especially in provinces that have the uh, provincial rebates. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing uh, huge numbers of interest, but uh, but in terms of uh, search. Um, vehicles mm -hmm. for for sale is still a little bit early for us to uh, to okay. see that okay. uh, reflected in the data. Yeah, um, but we certainly we certainly see um, signs of more and more uh, more and more folks interested. Whether it's mm -hmm. stories about uh, the national new national incentives or traffic towards these uh, electric vehicle stories, mm -hmm. we're certainly seeing encouraging signs of of uh, interest in, mm -hmm. in this market, no doubt about it. Obviously, there's probably um, not, uh, uh, there's a wide split in terms of how much interest there is in rebate provinces versus yeah. non-rebate provinces. But you know what? But Ontario has held on pretty well, considering that Ontario hasn't had a, yeah. you know, a provincial rebate for a year now. Exactly. I was going to say, I mean, we were leading the charge at the end of 2017. When you look at the numbers, um, you know, we had uh, gone out in front of Quebec, which was, of course, the number one province in Canada. Mm -hmm. And that was very encouraging. And then, of course, we came to a grinding halt last year. So yes. <laughs> it slowed everything <laughs> down. But uh, it's good to see, at least uh, from what I'm hearing and talking to dealers and talking mm -hmm. to people in the industry, like yourselves and others, that there is that uptake does seem to be coming back again. You know, it's slowly creeping in. And it's it's most likely not just financially, and you mentioned earlier, Michael, about you know that you were, you were you get asked a lot about the financial aspect of EV ownership, and that's probably one of the main questions that's still asked today. Is you know okay, how much money do I save? Do I can I really save? Do I really save money? Right. Um, because there is that learning curve, you know, after getting rid of range anxiety and what's out there now. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that change? You know, have you seen that kind of um, uh, you know, people asking, are they still asking similar questions or have you seen that um, morph over time and, and mature over time? Well, honestly, what I've seen in the biggest difference in the last eight years mm -hmm. is that there's some incredible, incredible deals on the used EV side. Mm -hmm. yeah. So not only is there a thousand dollars here in Ontario and uh, some other provinces have used vehicle uh, incentives now too, mm -hmm. which uh, are relatively new. But there's also, it is also true that we're seeing a fairly high uh, resale hit on some of those vehicles. And I know that for myself, I was hit by that hit mm -hmm. with, uh, with belief. And so obviously bigger batteries come out and people, yeah. don't, want, people don't want a Leaf anymore with yeah. 120 kilometers worth of range yeah. like the one I had. They want yeah. the you know, 30 kilowatt hour and then yeah. now the 60 kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. like it's, it just it goes yeah. up and up. But there's still a lot of usable range in a 30 kilowatt hour oh, Leaf. Yeah. And so uh, if, you, if you really want to save money at the total cost of operation, mm -hmm. I mean, there's just some incredible deals when yeah. you look at, uh, you know, two or three year old used vehicle. Yeah. So you're paying, you know, relatively low uh, buy-in mm -hmm. and then the uh, the fuel costs just uh, huge savings as well so I know with our leave uh, we were we were comparing it to a Pontiac Vibe which is our pre previous yeah. car relatively same yeah. size and shape for sure mm -hmm. Toyota Corolla engine yeah. relatively fuel efficient yeah. and uh, and we were saving about 80% on fueling costs yeah uh, so 
So I think it's still, it's still hard to say that yeah. you're going to buy a new EV to mm -hmm. save money because they are more expensive. Yes. No doubt about it. So you go into a dealership and you know you you look at a Kia Nero EV. That's a fifty thousand dollar vehicle. Yeah. yeah. You know, which is a tough sell when you know a similarly equipped vehicle in gas is thirty thousand, thirty-five thousand. Exactly. Yeah. But then two or three years from now, mm -hmm. all of a sudden that Kia Nero EV will be a lot closer to the price of that yeah, gas EV, you know, yeah. and it's uh, and there's still a lot of range going yeah. to be left in two or three years. Yeah, you make a great point, and I've talked to people about that as well. That you know, it's easy to fall into this you know quick this total cost of ownership. Um, story but as you mentioned you do have to kind of break it down a bit and i've said to people you know because of the cost parity isn't there yet because <clears throat> yeah. there is that premium without incentives i mean incentives mm -hmm. help to chew that away right that there's still going to be some time to make up that difference you know even people talk about the model three and how great it is and great but you know again it's a fifty thousand dollar car that thirty five thousand dollar thing isn't here in canada it's, you mm -hmm. know i mean right. you can go to tesla and and buy their stripped down version for thirty four nine 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 or right mm -hmm. you know plus, mm -hmm. um, but everybody's going to want to upgrade that. So, so you do need it's more than just a couple of years for a total cost of ownership because you need to absorb that extra. So if it's fifteen k twenty k difference as you mentioned, yeah. that could take you know seven eight years six eight years to to recoup that that extra savings. Now also the motivation though is hopefully a lot of people are are look. You know, going to do it about the environment, and we'll talk about some motivation a little bit. You gave me some some breaking news that we'll talk about. Uh, well, that, it'll already be out uh, on your site by the time that this podcast airs, but uh, mm -hmm. some information to back it up. But yeah, you know, financially, it's one aspect, but there's got to be other motivators, and you know, th the instant torque, right? When people, mm -hmm. so that's how you get to the the gearheads in the crowd and the petrol heads is well, try this thing out. You know, you'll be surprised how it goes and how quiet it is and how easy it is to to handle, right, with that low yeah. center of gravity and all these other attributes that card people will get, oh, I get this, right, that right, makes yeah. sense to me. Like, okay, money-wise, but I don't buy a five liter Mustang because I'm trying to save on fuel economy, right? Right. <laughs> There's yes. another you know, method, so, uh, and I'm sure you've experienced that. Yeah, no, it really is interesting mm -hmm. how even amongst petrol heads, it's uh, there's something about driving any electrified vehicle purely on electricity. Yeah. And you'll notice it, Back even when I was in the market for a car way back when, you know, what had me intrigued about uh, driving electric was that, well, I had driven lots of hybrids before. And the worst part about driving a hybrid is when the gas engine comes on. Yeah. You know, so uh, those hybrid drivers got a, a reputation for driving like grannies yeah. because I could because you could tell they were trying to mm -hmm. keep driving on electricity for as long as possible that's right because it's smooth it's quiet and really when you think about it lexus built an entire brand on being smooth and quiet mm -hmm. and you know it implies sophistication yeah. and, and future uh, future technology appeal yeah. all of that stuff so there's really i think there's a general acceptance that uh, future vehicles will be increasingly electrified. So even if they're not fully electric, right. there'll be more hybrids on the road, more plug-in hybrids, and then people will get more and more of a taste of that mm -hmm. electricity uh, driving. So Absolutely. so yes, so the more torque will definitely help. Yeah. The, uh, uh, and I think more and more enthusiasts will be convinced because we're starting to see it now, more yeah. and more sports cars, whether you're talking yeah. Porsche, whether you're talking Jaguar I-Paces, whether mm -hmm. you're talking performance version of Teslas, mm -hmm more and more electric vehicles are coming out there that yeah. enthusiasts are saying, oh, hey, wait a minute, that's yeah. that's a sweet machine. Absolutely is, and because of they're electrified and the, the powertrains are different than your conventional internal combustion powertrain, you can do things with those powertrains that you can't do. Yes, you know, Audi has Quattro and all this stuff and it's amazing, but you can take that to the next level with a fully electrified platform and I'll use Rivian as an example. There was mm -hmm. the recent tank steer, if you probably saw that, and some people th say, th say it's CGI. I don't know, I've looked at that video a few times and I've seen some other stuff that I just put on my other show, on my last show, that this thing is pretty maneuverable. And you can do that because in Rivian's case, they have a motor on every wheel. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, with, with the power of electricity and the, the, the technology that's not a limited slip differential or anything like that, these things can react much more faster and you can you can do what you want. You can map things differently and play around with, with these kind of settings much more instantaneously to get you these kind of benefits. And I think when, when those 
gear heads and petrol heads see this kind of stuff, they go, wow, like, you mm-hmm. know, this can, this thing can really do some things that I can't do and something else. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that extra weight helps and, and all that stuff keep it grounded, so. I remember one of my most memorable drives was driving the, <laughs> wow, the Porsche 918 Spider. Oh, nice. In yeah. Barcelona yeah, at yeah. the launch. Nice. So, so it was the first hyper car that I had driven that had plugged in. Mm-hmm. And so the big takeaway for me is, was I remember the headline at the time, you know, Supercar Plus Performance Toyota Prius Fuel Economy. <laughs> because yeah. when you were looking when thought? you were looking at the numbers, <laughs> it had twenty five, I believe it was twenty five or thirty five kilometers worth of all electric range. Yeah. Wow. So when I took a picture of the actual fuel efficiency on mm-hmm. the dash, it was it was like four liters per hundred kilometers for this wow. particular, you know, city focused loop. That's so right. So mind you, we weren't driving on the track at that yeah. point, and this, so this was kind of a real world number on a on a lower mm-hmm. city course. But still, though, when you have, I remember thinking it was the most fascinating thing because not only could you drive and it be super quiet and super comfortable in the city, mm-hmm. what happened when you would drive on the track was that that electric boost would be added to the top end. That's right. So instead of running out of revs, That's you would right. actually get this huge electric boost at the end. It was almost like an electric turbocharger. That's right. Mm-hmm. And it, it really was incredible. So the, the racers in the group liked it because it had the, the low speed predictability mm-hmm. of gas, mm-hmm. but it still, it, it had this massive top end. So what you can do with, uh, with some of these new powertrains uh, are, really, are really incredible. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, that's a great example, I think. Thank you for sharing that because again it's it's talking to this these kind of people i mean you know we were talking just before we started i press the record button that you know we're both advocates we're both activists as well involved in ev society and i'll put a plug for for them here in ontario um but yeah you know like we go to car shows and we'll mm-hmm. we'll be this little group in the middle of this you know hot yeah. rod car show <laughs> and all this right. stuff and people walk like what are you guys here for yeah. well you start talking about this kind of stuff to them you don't talk about tco and stuff you you put it in their nomenclature and their mm-hmm. verbiage and they go okay i get it Maybe I should look at something like this. I mean, never yeah. mind the bike guys with the Zero and all this other stuff that's out there. Like, that's mind-boggling what, what those bikes are going to do. And as they move forward, Harley's going to go electric, I'm hearing. So that's it's right. certainly yeah. coming in that world. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned Porsche and some of the vendors. And, you know, I, I've experienced some of the cars that you've driven as well, you know, with the Jaguar I-Pace and some of the others. And not to, to your um, your repertoire that you've had more access than I am. Still a small kind of uh, potatoes guy here in Ontario. It's hard to get cars sometimes for some of the guys. But um, you've got a bunch of papers out. Let me, let me let you explain what you want to talk about as far as if some of the vendors and maybe stats uh, or, or what, well, what you're seeing there. Well, yeah, I just want to talk uh, just a little bit to give you an idea of what folks are looking for uh, uh-huh. from, from an electric basis Great. on our site the most. So for a long time, it was the Chevrolet Volt. Mm-hmm. The Chevrolet Volt yeah. and uh, Nissan Leaf, traditionally, mm-hmm. they they were kind of neck and neck right. from uh, from our perspective in terms of searches. And I guess and Tesla, so, I was just going to say Tesla's been around for a while, but because of the CPO, whatever they call it now, Tesla used cars, I don't know what they call it, but because of their model of more direct relationship, you don't see a ton of Teslas on Auto no. Trader or other Kijiji or other sites just because most of them go back to, to Tesla, right? The high majority, whereas other vendors, other manufacturers, you will see that more prevalent, correct? Exactly, yeah. exactly. We see uh, we see relatively few Teslas. Yeah. We're starting to see more and more Model S's on mm-hmm. the market now. Yeah, so actually, from too. from Teslas, from Tesla, we see the most. It's Model S. Okay. I mm-hmm. mean, Model Three is still relatively mm-hmm. new, and so there's nobody's a, getting rid of them yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> so from uh, yeah, so it's relatively few. Model S right. for sure is the uh, the highest on our list, mm-hmm. and so just looking at uh, what else, it's actually number three on our list, believe it or not. Oh wow, okay. So it's uh, it's still okay. yeah, it's still relatively high up there. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's something. So after that, you know what else does really well? It's actually kind of surprising, is the BMW i. Three, mm-hmm. but the BMW i8, <laughs> the BMW i8 okay. has a lot yeah. of people looking for it. Wow. So, yeah, hmm. so I don't know if that's folks who, uh, I know that one particular one that was on there, it was somebody who was trading in 
Is it trading in an R8? No, sorry. They were they had Ooh. bought an <laughs> I8. And they had traded in an R8 wow. on an I8 mm -hmm. and then were then two or three years later selling uh, the I8 mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. put it on our site because they were going to buy some some other high yeah. end sports yeah. car. But it was uh, but it's interesting because you look at that car, two seats, uh, very exotic, mm -hmm. yeah. and you wouldn't think it would uh, be up there. But it, there's yeah, there's a lot of folks, and wow. if you drive that car, it, it's still amazing how much yeah. attention it gathers. I mean, it not does. only do the is it the the doors that swing up That's that right. obviously attract a lot mm -hmm. of attention, but but even what five years after it's hit the market, now, yeah. it's, it's um, five or six years. It's still, it'll yeah. attract more attention. I remember actually being at a car show. It'll yeah. attract more attention. There was a Lamborghini parked here. Yeah. There's an I-8 parked here. And uh, it was incredible how yeah. many more people were uh, were looking at the I-8 versus the Lamborghini. Exactly. So mind you, it was a couple of years ago, so it was newer on the market. Yep. But it was still yeah. two or three years into its uh, life, so it wasn't the latest and greatest. But uh, but I think, they're, I think there's both enthusiast and mm -hmm. mainstream appeal there. Mm-hmm. Interesting, so, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's a fantastic car. It looks great. I mean, for me, I need a big shoehorn to get into that thing because mm. you have to slip in, but uh, it's yeah, really a beautiful right. car. Um, are you seeing, uh, you mentioned the Volt, and, you know, it's too bad that GM has discontinued the Volt because it really is a great, you know, I, I think plug-in hybrids, I'm not really a big fan of hybrids, just general hybrids. Um, mm. I, I'd rather see somebody do a plug-in. But then, you know, some of them it just, you know, like the, the Beamer, the 330E and stuff like that. I mean, you know, at 12 miles, whatever that is, it, it's just a token, you know, compliance car. And I mean, I'm, I'm glad right. it's something. And maybe for some people it'll work, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to give you much. But the Volt was really a great stopgap vehicle that had good range. You can get 80 kilometers, you know, yeah. whatever that is, 60 miles or so, uh, 55, 60 miles in, in, in good weather. And that's usually enough for a lot of daily driving. You know, we, we both is. know a lot of Volt people. Yeah. Um, so what if, let's, if we talk about some of the vendors, I mean, what do you, what do you, where's GM at? What are you seeing them? I mean, the Bolt's still relatively newer, so you're not seeing a lot of that, are you, or are you? So we are seeing Bolt kind of mm -hmm. rising up quickly yeah. in, the, in the ranks. But I have to say, it is uh, it is a little bit disappointing that we didn't see that Volt powertrain go into something a little bit larger, right. maybe a little bit more practical. Mm -hmm. I know they added the, the fifth seat there in yep. the second generation version, but even the fifth seat mm -hmm. wasn't mm -hmm. really that useful as the yeah. fifth seat because of the shape of the battery. Like Something like a clarity so, si size for GM would have been, I think... A really nice sweet spot for them. Do you think so? Yeah. It, it would have been, that, and, and they have showed and they mm -hmm. have showed concept versions of a, an SUV version uh -huh. of the okay. of the Volt. And I remember yeah. when we were looking at our Leaf, I remember asking GM folks about it because we were we were close to uh, uh, we were looking closely at both of them, mm -hmm. and we actually considered well maybe we should wait until we have something. My wife liked the hatchback body style, sure. but we would yeah. have gone to uh, yeah. to a small SUV. Yeah, you sit a little and higher. Than had, the whole thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. If they had offered it, we uh, we would have jumped yeah. on it at the yeah. time. And so they didn't. They never did. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, now it's mm -hmm. out of production. Mm -hmm. But um, but it certainly seems mm -hmm. like they're following more the Tesla model, where yeah. they're going all electric. Yeah. And I have to say though, I think it is smarter on their part mm -hmm. to at least go all electric with some of their higher end vehicles to sure. start. Of it course. was something that's where the margins are, so we know that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what? For it's a, a business, long right, time, folks, or you know, <laughs> Tesla did the yeah. exact same thing. Start with the most expensive yeah. vehicles, and then you know, go yeah. down the, mm -hmm. the price scale from there. I think it's it's going to be tougher for GM to go, you know, reset itself again in, right. in that way. But uh, but I think the the Bolt is yeah. is a good product. I have a feeling yeah. that they're going to let it wither on the vine a little bit. Yeah, you know, we're, kind of we're similar expecting to, a bit of a refresh for, for model year 2020 that didn't really happen. So yeah. so mm -hmm. so it seems it seems like there's some commitment there, but okay. it also seems like there's some wondering about well maybe we should reorient yeah. how we attack the market and they yes. see what's happening with Tesla uh, and they yeah. see some of the, uh, you know, the that, that, that there's interest the there. The disruption that's caused in that whole marketplace by right. Tesla and others, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And so, but they, I think they also do realize that getting the battery cells and getting some of mm -hmm. the uh, corporate supplies chain in that place chain, yeah. is going to, yeah, is it going to take them a little longer <laughs> than than yeah. they had planned? And so from, yeah. from that perspective, yeah. I think them starting 
with higher end models and then yeah. going down. I mean, we really have very few choices when it comes to the hottest vehicle, um, you know, body style in the market, which is uh, SUVs. Mm -hmm. We we have the e-tron, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have the Mitsubishi Outlander, mm -hmm. we have the I-Pace sort of. Sort of. I wouldn't put that as an SUV. Yeah. But I, it's you know. but this is but this is the thing. They kind of they're relative. The EQC, <laughs> which is launched, it's just they're not delivering yet. But you know, it's so, in the pipeline to start showing up. In Canadian shores before the year's out, from what I understand. So there is it something yeah. else there, yeah. Yeah, the Model so, X. I mean, certainly Model I mean, X the is model, an SUV. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, but that'll start over six figures. Yeah, and yeah, so when time. you're when you're talking about okay, well, what most people can afford, all of a sudden now this gets yeah. very short. It does I mean, get it's short. Mitsubishi, you're right. and yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah basically yeah. Mitsubishi. Yeah, when and I, maybe I they're coming like out. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so yeah, That's so true. there's talk about uh, BMW yeah. coming out with a X3 yep. version plug-in, and which yep. is great. But right IX3, now, I think and the iX5 and those kind of iterations, which are great sizes. I mean, exactly. As you said, exactly. it takes but, some time to get to there. And you know, and my counterpoint though to that, Michael, is that. Um, like I would think something like a GM, and I'll get the VW in a sec, because I'm I'm really kind of all in on on VW. I'm really excited about them, mm -hmm. um, and and my viewers know that they think I'm a little biased, maybe and jaded, but there's reasoning behind that. But something like a GM and a Ford that have the the massive infrastructure and that have the the know how for economies of scale that can do these things in a big way. It's disheartening when you, like as you just described the GM story, that they're still kind of, you know, letting things wither and kind of re-looking at the landscape where if, you know, if anybody's had a chance to jump onto this marketplace and really take a commanding lead, it's somebody like a GM or a Ford, you know, that have that, that massive organization behind them. Why haven't they really just decided to, to do that? Do they just, are they not really seeing that? Electrification will be a tipping point at some point. You know, we are, we are experiencing that paradigm shift it now, you know, as, as the uptake is occurring much faster, even though it's a small percentage. What, what's your opinion on that? I really think the auto industry is a global industry. Mm -hmm. And when you look at where a lot of the pressure is for super fuel efficient um, vehicles, it's not in North America. Right. Yeah. So Asia, Europe. Unless we're at five bucks a gallon or, you know, two, bu two, two bucks exactly. a liter, the then land it of, is. <laughs> exactly. The, the land of super cheap fuel yeah. is, is probably not the best right. place in the world mm -hmm. to go full hog on, True. Uh, yeah. you know, electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the other hand, you're right. Um, GM especially, they, they did get in relatively early. They did. And they did yeah. make significant investments For sure. you know, with the with the Volt, with the mm -hmm. Bolt, with the B. And so it, you know, there could they have done more? Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. But I think when you look at the overall market picture and you look at what people were actually buying, mm -hmm. we talked about the, the lack of, of SUVs, mm -hmm. you can sort of understand why they would put more emphasis on the production of trucks and right. you know it, 2009 wasn't that long yeah. in the past That's true so you know GM was large but it's not like even large companies mm -hmm. can run out of money yeah and That's so true. you know the, a bad corporate decision here or there can have serious global consequences good point yeah so I do think that if there's any region of the world that that would be uh, leading in this area, although California, I mm -hmm. think, does a great job in yes. terms of pushing North America forward. Yep. And I think what they have managed to do is really incredible, especially in the last couple of years when, Absolutely. you know, there's been kind of a, a battle between, uh, you know, the <laughs> California yeah. and uh, yeah, the federal yeah, government in the exactly. U.S. So, so I think it, it really is uh, California has had a, yeah. a global influence over and above its, its scale. I mean, it's, yeah. it's 35 million people, very similar to Canada. Yeah. But when you look at the actual uh, number of or the amount of influence that they've had with their uh, emissions regulations yep. and with uh, mm -hmm. just you look at the the yep. market there uh, people buying evs as well it uh, it really is an outsized influence compared to their market size absolutely is and i was going to mention that that a lot of people may not understand the significance of california and the carbon you know, why mm -hmm. like why do vendors care well from a from a north american market they are the biggest single market you know, just as that state alone, and, and you know, I don't know how many millions of cars they buy a year. You know, it's a, it's an astronomical number. So if you want to play 
And you want to sell cars in that state, you have to have a compliance or compliance vehicles, you know, based on the mandate. So right. that's the way it works. So, yeah. so they'll, they'll put these compliance cars together just so that it allows them to sell their trucks and everything else that they want to sell that's profitable because those are the things that are moving for them. So, uh, but as you said, California is, you know, we have to continue to give them credit because even now they're, they're fighting and they're continuing to push that agenda forward on, on, you know, on a cleaner, greener economy. So hats off. And, and that, that has a ripple effect, right? It has a ripple oh, yeah. effect across the world, as does China. And what mm-hmm. they're doing, you know, similar of their own. Like, I don't talk much about China because it's it's a huge market in its own and so much going on. But that ripple effect is coming through because now we're seeing Chinese manufacturers, you know. I think I don't know if you mm-hmm. went to Detroit Auto Show, but there mm-hmm. was um, G, uh, GIAC, was it? Or... A G- uh, GAC, G- right? GAC yeah, you know, yeah, like these guys that, mm-hmm. that would never be there before are saying, hey, we were starting to put a foothold in these marketplaces because now they're they're experiencing this growth and they want to get the market. So, you know, valid points. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll be here yeah. sooner or later. <laughs> and uh, they've been saying that for yeah. a few years now. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so they are really leading the, uh, the yeah. electric vehicle charge. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, and, but I mean, but California as well. They've yeah. managed to get other states and even Canadian provinces, mm-hmm. Ontario and Quebec, yep. have adopted their standards. Yep. So they're... Um, yeah, so their influence is, is not only American, yeah. but it's, uh, you know, it's pan North American and, and sure. global as well. For sure. Because they were one of the first to be, so, uh, to be hard on emissions. Yeah, goals. I mean, so I mentioned VW earlier that I'm really stoked on them. So, you know, we talk about GM Ford. We know that they're kind of still, as you mentioned, you know, still trying to find themselves within that market, you know, looking at the risk factor because, as you said, it, it is a business. Mm-hmm. Nissan continues to move forward. And we'll, we'll actually, let's switch. Let's talk about Nissan for a sec. So, you know, they're one of the original players you know kind of like right. the original six in hockey they've been around <laughs> since day one yep. um, they continue to, to move forward you know they make announcements they're going to have eight eight electrified vehicles by 2025 or something like that of different facets which is good i think they could still do more uh they seem they to could. be you know stuttering stepping a little bit <clears throat> i mean you know you and i both looked at, at mm-hmm. the 40 and the 62 leafs i, I love both of them for right. different reasons and i think mm-hmm. they, they 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 can certainly fulfill use cases in, in many different marketplaces. Um, you know, right. if somebody wants to, to do five, six, seven hundred kilometers a day in driving, then I wouldn't recommend a Leaf personally. Mm-hmm. Um, it could do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. So there are use cases. Yeah. Um, but, are, you know, do you see anything else coming from them? I mean, do you think that they could be doing more? You know, considering their lead, mm-hmm. I think a lot of companies could be doing more. Uh-huh. And it's true that Nissan, they did show some concept versions mm-hmm. of the uh, of an Infiniti with That's a right. similar um, powertrain to the Leaf. But of course, you know, the Cadillac ELR mm-hmm. kind of hit the market with that similar powertrain right. to the Volt. And really, I think it churned a lot of auto executives off mm-hmm. the idea of hmm, sharing powertrains that way. Um, but mind you, I still think the Cadillac ELR is one of the best looking plug-in vehicles that were available. And I, sure. I keep, yep. I keep my eyes open on our site <laughs> yeah, all the yeah. time okay. for, uh, for good prices on, your uh, on ELRs. Your search yeah. robot looking. Yeah, that's right. I have it in my garage. <laughs> and so go. when I get my yeah. notifications, yeah, there's new nice. ELR in your area. So, so yeah, yeah so it's, uh, it's handy that way. Yeah. And we're starting to see they're actually cool. holding their value better than I'd hoped, but, yeah. uh, good but point. still, so. So I do think that Nissan could be doing mm-hmm. uh, a little bit more, but that's yep. you could say that about every company. Yeah. I think it's just sadder with Nissan because they were they dived in um, head yeah. first and they so, really they they poured. Say what you want about Carlos. I mean, he into, was he was thinking. You know, yeah. He was forward thinking like Elon was at the time, and and uh, and Lee, I guess, at the time. Or no, it would have been sorry, not Lee. Um, oh, I just lost him. Uh, who the uh, the CEO of GM way back when uh, he's always he's retired now but uh, it'll, it'll come oh uh, not uh, yes not uh, Leo Iacocca Bob yeah. Lutz yeah Bob Bob that's right so those yeah. I watched the Revenge two which was right. better yes, than yes. in my opinion than Revenge one because it really, really? well kind of oh. it kind of substantiates the oh market I like now. the original oh yeah, yeah. well that was all emotional <laughs> watching movie stars uh, yes. you know lie in front of their cars and get arrested but this one yeah. was more about uh, let's build a business on this let's incorporate this in the business. 
business. It was fascinating to see that that part of it because that's really what helped drive the marketplace, you know, to where we are now. Not so much the the really early days of protests and, and changing nice. yourself to vehicles, no, but um, uh, you know, that certainly from from Nissan. And now the timing for Nissan, right, they just announced some job cuts, some you know, twelve thousand or so, thirteen thousand jobs globally. So that could you know reduce uh, some of their forward thinking a little bit, and they might have to restructure. They've got, of course, Carlos and some some top brass restructuring going on what's going on all that stuff so right, right, i'm hoping yeah. that nissan does continue though because they they build yeah. a, a decent product um and and you know it, it's pretty value conscious for what you get um yeah. mind you the the e plus is at the price point now where they are at some of the competitors you mentioned mm -hmm. the nero before right, there's right. the kona so yeah. there's a couple of other things model three you can't discount that so th no. there are a few other things choices that are out there and people will hear you know they who watch my shows and listen to me know that i say Great, bring it on. The more choice, the better, right? You said yeah. we don't have a lot of choice. We have a lot more now than we did last year or five years ago. But certainly we need more to really start spurring that tipping point and that mass adoption, right? Yeah, yeah, it definitely, it definitely is all getting, it is definitely is getting better, mm -hmm. no, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. But I think the, uh, the waves of new vehicles yet to come is, is going to be greater than anything we have ever seen mm -hmm. for sure before, but greater than I think a lot of people even anticipate. Yeah. Because it's, uh, you know, we've seen a, a trickle, so probably more, it hasn't been two. I know for the first year or so, a couple of years, it was just the, the leaf and the volt and leaf and the volt, mm -hmm. and then every year you'd add a couple here, a couple yeah. there, yeah. And, uh, and we're still kind of continuing that, oh yeah, I think, yeah. But then this year is a few more, yeah. but I think... Uh, what do you think of 2020? I, 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 I say that because people yeah. that have watched, like a lot of uh, viewers that have watched me since the beginning with Trevor when we did the Model 3, and we talked about 2020 being this magical, you know, a lot of announcements for 2020. What do you think, how do you think next year is going to shape up? Is it really going to be kind of a, a pivotal year in this movement? So I do, I do. I don't have the uh, the list of mm -hmm. uh, of debuts in front of me. There's a lot, though. but that, but there is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is, and, and uh, who knows? Is, yeah. And and globally yeah. there is, and it's always it's always tough to get uh, <laughs> to separate out the press releases from the actual vehicles yeah. that that are arriving. Yeah. So so for sure, there's going to be uh, quite a few significant numbers. Mm -hmm. I think next next year we're probably going to see more EV launches than I'd say in the past three years combined. Right. So I think it's going to be fascinating to see um, the extra choices we have. And I think it's true that right now we do have a lot mm -hmm. of EV mm -hmm. hatchbacks available on the market, but we do need more choices in terms yep. of body styles and yep. what's coming. And I, I think that uh, I think that those will slowly yep. start to come in uh, next year. Uh, they'll start a year after. I mean, it's just it's going to expand it's uh, the question too that i think is is going to be super important is what price are they going to come in at mm -hmm. because right now when i'm sitting that, in mm -hmm. when i'm sitting in an all new lexus ux 250h and i'm looking at the price tag and it's fifty two thousand dollars and i hop out of a kona ev ultra fully loaded uh, assessed price fifty two thousand dollars. Yes, and you're sitting in one, and you're sitting in the other, yeah, and true. you know the uh, the Lexus has you know very uh, the wood trim, and it has the uh, uh, leather piping on the seats, and it has it ha it looks like a luxury vehicle right. interior, mm -hmm. and then you look at the Hyundai Kona, and yes, it looks slightly different from a regular Kona. Mm -hmm. It looks more high tech. But it doesn't look quite like what some people would think of as a fifty-two thousand right. dollar interior. I totally agree. So yeah. it's one thing to say, right. "Hey, you have all of these choices," yeah. but if all of these choices don't come in at a price that's appealing, right. Right. and you're overly dependent on incentives from either provincially or federally, then then yeah, it uh, it becomes a little bit dangerous. Yeah. So I think it's it's key not only to look at what's coming, but yeah. also to look at the price point they're coming at. Yeah, I mean, some of the analysts are predicting cost parity within five years. I think it's still a little farther out there. Unfortunately, I would love to see it like tomorrow. Don't get me wrong, because anything to mm -hmm. spur adoption. But mm -hmm. I think the reality of the situation is that the reluctancy to really 
take those prices down because you're absolutely correct. You know, when you look at 50000 that's a lot of money. People mm -hmm. talk about the Model 3 and all this kind of stuff, but I mean, you know, the Leaf, uh, I mean, I, the, my Leaf last year, and, and I've been public with this because I've done uh, cost analysis on my show, you know, I was out the door like thirty six k because of the incentives and everything. That's, right, right. you know, I, I never spent that much on a new car in my entire life. And I've owned over 30 cars in my life, most of them used, but some new. Right, right. I, I would never thought about spending that kind of money, 30, 40, 50 K. So that's a lot of money for, for you know, middle class kind of, you know, for for a lot of people. Sure, sure. Um, and you're absolutely right. That whole fit and finish and quality, it's different, right? You know, the Leaf Plus, $50,000 50, and plus. There's a lot of plastics in there. There's a lot of aging type of tech maybe and or look to it. You know, and then you go sit in something like, I usually said, a Lexus or something else of comparable uh, price point, a BMW. I mean, my goodness. Yeah. It's hard to get those people to switch over. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the pricing pricing yeah. is still key. Mm -hmm. So the good thing that I like to think of is uh, we talked a little bit about some of the deals on yeah. the slightly used side of things. The other good thing about some of these cars that uh, if you look at the electric vehicles is that, yes, uh, two or three years you might have, let's say, a little bit of degradation yep. uh, of the battery, yep. but you also have a rapidly expanding infrastructure where there's a lot That's more. Right. There's a lot more EV chargers, mm -hmm. both uh, quick chargers and regular yep. L2s on the road uh, that were available two or three years ago. Right. So your net flexibility, you know, could actually be increased even while your your range itself is is going down. Yeah, and I remember that was yeah. I remember that was an issue when we when we sold our when we sold our leave. Like, wow, this this leave, even though it's yep. uh, it's degraded the battery a little yeah. bit, actually quite a bit more than uh, we had hoped. Right. Mm -hmm. We could still go everywhere yep. we wanted to go because there's just so many more charging options around right. just in those four years. Yeah. And that's understandable. And I'm not, uh, we'll quickly move on, but you know, I'm not defending Nissan or whatever from a quality or whatever engineering, but you know, early tech is always going to be not as, you know, not as, uh, feature rich and not as longevity as newer tech. It's just the right. way it is. Look yeah, at, yeah, go back sure. and look at your older laptops from 1990s. I mean, if you got an mm -hmm. hour battery life on them, you were lucky, right? And if, you, yeah, if you're yeah. able to load, you know, Word in, in under a minute or two, you were like really, you know, far ahead of everybody. So that's just the way technology works, right? You got to start right. somewhere and the early adopters pay for that. But but <laughs> yes, even, you know, even like you mentioned, the used <laughs> yeah. leaf. I mean, like my wife is a perfect use case for a used you know, 30, 40 kilometers a day, that's it. Has free charging at work. It's like, my goodness, here's a mm. perfect use oh, case wow. for Look a second yes. car. Now, we're not going to do anything right now because my idea, hopefully, is in a few years to get a bigger range and then she gets my Leaf. But I plan on driving that Leaf for eight years, like into the ground. Oh, yeah. Right, that's my plan. That's typical Canadian, I guess. We just keep duct taping and driving it <laughs> until we can't drive anymore. You know, then we go. Hopefully, for your business, it's not that bad because you want people switching. But um, let's I, I, I'm keep an eye on the time. I know we're getting close to our finish, but I want to mm -hmm. just quickly run down then, you know, a few seconds on each vendor. So we talked about some of them. We failed to talk a little bit about Chrysler because they're not doing much. I'm, I am happy no. that they have at least the Pacifica hybrid because I think yes. that's a sweet spot for a plug-in hybrid. It really is. I mean, that's uh, it is an amazing vehicle. Mm -hmm. I've driven it uh, multiple times. The only plug-in vehicle built in Canada, yeah. which I think is uh, worthy of special mention. It's uh, it is a fabulous vehicle. I mean, it's unfortunate that you you lose the stow and go seats mm -hmm. when you go with the hybrid yep. version. But really, it's uh, you know it's that van has so much <laughs> that's so much space that's right. that uh, it really it's it's not much of a of a compromise. Exactly. So it's yeah for someone like your wife, yeah. I don't know how much space you need, but it mm -hmm. really it's oh. uh, it's something that uh, yeah, and those Absolutely. are real world kilometers that's that range right. that it has. Exactly. So, Other so. than that, I mean, do you see Chrysler doing anything else in the short term? I you know I know that Fiat's mm. kind of whining away, and it's hard it'd be hard to get them up here anyway. I don't hear much from them on electrification. Yeah, no, there's certainly not going to be a leader, yeah. put it that way. So I'm <laughs> sure right. we'll hear Wait something Chrysler, something yeah. from them, but uh, but okay. yeah, I wouldn't call it imminent. So let's let's let me get the VW at the end of this. Oh, actually, but, there's going to yeah, be a Gladiator, a Jeep Gladiator oh, that's plug-in, right. and Jeep right. Wrangler plug-in hybrid. That. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. going to be uh, we're going to be receiving those within a year. Oh, okay. So there's something. Cool. There's Good. something. So yeah, it's yeah. so it's not. Yeah, even with uh, yeah, yeah, even with Chrysler, there's there's things coming. Yeah. 
So, so and again, a great platform for that. You know, all wheel drive versions. It got lots of great torque. Pick up and go. Sit a little higher for those people that want that. Uh, you know, the drive in the country or whatever. Certainly a good way to do that. Um, you mentioned Kia before. So quickly, the Koreans. I mean, they've come out of the gate now. I mean, the Ionics. It's a great vehicle, one of the most efficient BEVs out on the marketplace. It, it, it comes in a couple of different, you know, variants, of course, a fully uh, electrified plug-in hybrid and, uh, and normal. But, you know, w- are you excited about what, what's going on with Kia and Hyundai and those folks? Yeah, they've probably been the most active uh-huh. for 2020. Yeah. When you look at the, uh, the Kia Soul EV, mm-hmm. you look at the Kia Nero EV, you look at the Hyundai yeah. Kona EV, I mean, sure, all they're, all these electrified versions of uh, their gas cars coming out. So, yes, they're technically separate companies, but with uh, common global ownership. So yep. there's a lot of uh, parts sharing yep. there. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, dealers can't get enough of them. They just come out of one plant in South Korea. They just got to spe- get get their stuff together, right? Whether it's battery cells or whatever the excuse is. But yeah. I, I, I agree. I think, you know, I, I reviewed the Kia. It was my pick for you know, BV of the year, basically, because mm-hmm. it just, it really finds a sweet spot in a lot of markets, not just, again, when I look at the markets, I'm just look, not looking at North America, USA, or Canada. I'm looking at it globally. And, you know, that car fits a, fits a, a sweet spot in Europe because it's not too big, has that, that it fits a lot of Asian, obviously, in other countries. So... I just wish they can crank out enough. So, you know, my yeah. hope is that we start seeing some acceleration in production. And again, that hopefully leads to economies of scale and, and get some price drop. Um, what's your take on Tesla? I mean, you guys, you know, don't deal a lot, but I mean, uh, you know, the Model 3 is almost flying off shelves. It really is fabulous. <laughs> so, I mean, Tesla has yeah. literally driven the market yeah. for everyone else. And I can tell you without a word, of doubt without a, a scintilla of doubt yeah. that without Tesla we would be <laughs> so much further behind we in the electric be, vehicle mm-hmm. business. Yep. And so it's uh, because even back in the day, I remember Bob Lutz saying, "Well, you couldn't stand in front of a board and argue that you couldn't do a respectable electric car when here's this tiny uh, kit car maker in their That's eyes right. in those yeah. days, and those way days back were, yeah. way back when." That uh, yeah. you know, are are getting people to pay one hundred twenty five thousand dollars for the Tesla That's Roadster right. at the yeah. time, so <laughs> you say you you couldn't argue that anymore That's because true. you were Good GM, point. and so yeah. so going going from there with the uh, with the Model S uh, first you know, mm-hmm. getting so many accolades when it came out, being the quickest, being the still the best, does the still best does selling. get accolades, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and be, great being vehicle. the uh, being the best selling in that market. I mean, you look at the sales numbers of mm-hmm. Tesla Model S versus yeah. S classes, you know, and that'll that'll be enough to get Mercedes Benz. They're attention. chewing away at that luxury market. They're definitely are. and the Model Three, and the Model now Three is even more so. chewing yeah. at that entry level market. You know, luxury market. And people forget Tesla is a luxury brand. That's what they go by. Mm-hmm. They're not, you know, they're not a, I don't know, a, a Chevy. Um, uh, we, you know, whatever, like the, the, nor- the regular Econo brands that these guys have. That's not where they, they want to play. Um, so you're absolutely correct. You know, the Model 3 kind of ignited the market and, and mm-hmm. just really proved that for a more mass market appeal, it's a viable market and everybody's looking to follow. Um, yeah. VW, I wanted to just quickly, you know, I'm stoked on them. You know, I know it's been a lot of vaporware. It's been a lot <laughs> yes. of talk. Eagle's a, a great car. I mean, Eagle's yeah. a great car. I mean, I, you know, just can't get them that easy That's now, a little bit better, but there's still not that many. No, Are you excited, though, about what they're talking about? Do you believe in what they're saying that they're going to actually start doing some stuff? I do believe that they are going to do some stuff. I do too, yeah. You know, I think they were they were basically headlocked into yeah. doing a, a lot of that <laughs> stuff. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's kind of unfortunate that right. it that it took what it did for uh, for them to make as many moves. But in another way, if the end result uh, ends up being that there's uh, it seems like they're going to be the mainstream manufacturer mm-hmm. that's going to take things further than any other manufacturer totally agree and so yeah. from a global perspective we were talking about how you know, North America is probably not when you look at gas prices yes. it's probably not um, the ideal place to uh, sell electric vehicles mm-hmm. where your you know your main tenants 
are that uh, yeah you're saving money on fuel and it's uh, less electricity yeah. so i think uh, volkswagen traditionally has been a powerhouse right. in asia they've yeah. traditionally been a powerhouse in europe for sure and so yeah. i think they are pouring the resources that no other uh, automaker right now is doing so it is tough to see where they are in the market right now yeah. because they really are lagging behind mm -hmm. and uh, and you know anyone who has driven a, a diesel Volkswagen sort of knows that you know there was some appeal to it from a driving yep. perspective but um, but you know from an environmental perspective diesel is just a, a non-starter yep. and uh, and especially when you're um, yeah, especially when you're not conforming to right. actual right. diesel laws. Well, you've got to hold it to yourself. So, out of, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and really, so really at the end of the day, yeah. I think it's uh, it's something where they're literally going to start from the bottom. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah. who knows where they end up. Had to learn the hard way, but I totally agree. I mean, they are an organization, when you peel the layers back of, of you know, 12 different product lines, you know, mm -hmm. um, 600,000 workforce, something like that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's just phenomenal how big these guys are. If anybody can bring this stuff and economies of scale, and that's why I'm really juiced about VW being able to maybe close that cost parity gap. I mean, you mentioned, you know, North America isn't the greatest place to maybe kick off, you know, battery because of our our distances and our culture here but Europe and Asia and others it's more appealing um, to do that shorter distances shorter typically shorter ranges uh, more infrastructure in a tighter spot you know that kind of stuff I mean when I tell yeah. people if I were to drive to Winnipeg through Ontario it would take me 18 hours to get yeah. out of the province they go what I can go like four countries in Europe in 18 or, oh, yeah, or whatever easily, right? yes, easily. Yeah. so the, people forget the massive scale or try to drive across the US so if VW you know for them to launch the ID3 I know there's disappointment we were hoping to see it here but that's mm. the place to start doing it build that momentum you know get get that that whole supply chain figured out organized they've been as you said, they've been spending billions of dollars on lining things up. Now they're retooling plants. They're getting things together. I fully expect them to, to really for 2020 and and you know they'll get some some stuff out by the end of the year or, or close to that. But then to really start shining. And I really do think, think that though that things can change quickly. I mean, yeah. really in the blink of an eye. I mean, if we see gas prices in North America spike up 30, 40 percent, which they could. Which they yeah. could, and we've seen it before. <laughs> I mean, right. there was, there were times where times, people were just, yeah, a few yeah. times where people were just handing back the keys to yeah. their full size SUVs and saying, "Sorry, you know what? I can't afford to fill this thing anymore." Walking away from things, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, and they couldn't true. keep hybrids on the shelf at that point. Yeah. And so now, if they have, you know, something similar. All of a sudden, potential for EV plans in North mm -hmm. America could get a lot more accelerated. Mm -hmm. And maybe when they're not planning on bringing the ID3 with yeah. gas prices where they are now, well, you know, if anything happens yeah. in the world, and it doesn't have to be a major catastrophe, right. but, you yeah. know, it's a, if, if gas prices spike in, yeah. in North America, who knows? Plans could change. Absolutely. And, you know, when I interviewed them uh, on the last audio podcast, they let loose a couple of nuggets. And one of them was that they're trying to get something similar like an ID3 to Canada at some point. It won't be the first model. Their Cross, I believe, is the first model, the Cross. That'll come to, to North America from them. But, you know, that is in the plans. They do recognize the market spaces here and they'll see what they can do. Um, uh, before we get to a wrap up, I just want to ask now one, one vendor that's not here that I'm super excited about more mm -hmm. for Europe is MG you mm -hmm. know, being Chinese built now with SAIC doing that. But th their release of the ZS EV, my goodness. Now talk about bringing the prices down. Talk about okay, it maybe doesn't have to have real Corinthian leather and wood trim, <laughs> but now you're talking about something that's 24,000 pounds, 26,000 or so euros, um, that will get you 100, you know, 150 mile range, let's say, with pretty nice creature comforts and, and, and a small SUV package. Uh, what, do you, what are you thinking of that? I know it's out of your wheelhouse because they're not here, but what, what's your opinion on that? I think the the pricing on all these yeah. EVs are so key. I know that uh, one of my colleagues here at work, they were so disappointed that the Honda E wouldn't be available right. here. Yeah. And like, wow, you know, it looks great. That's going to be an you know, expensive vehicle though, right? And so so <laughs> I haven't seen the the yeah. pricing of yeah. it, but but to him, he was he was looking at it and like, wow, it reminds me of an old Honda Civic yes, exactly. that uh, that he remembers fondly. Yeah. And so he's, he's been asking me, oh, what's the price of that? You know, is yeah. it coming? What, what do you mean it's not coming to North America? Right. Why not? You know, but it, I think for a lot of people, 
the price is key. Yes. And so, so if there's uh, if there's a case in Europe where any of the smaller manufacturers can can make something more inexpensively, yeah. whether it be you know, producing it in Eastern Europe or mm -hmm. uh, yeah. whether it's a supply chain right. uh, agreement that they make with a larger yeah. automaker, it's uh, it's going to be super super important to get those prices down if uh, if it's going to go mainstream. Exactly. And I think in in Europe where you already have the uh, the pricing structure of yeah. gas so expensive. You have a, a built-in, uh, a built-in incentive to go to go EVs. So, so yeah, I think it's. I wish that some more options would come yes, here to North America do, yeah. that uh, that aren't here. Yeah. Scholars but on the other hand, there's a lot of vehicles. Guys, yeah. There's a lot yeah. of vehicles available in North America that aren't available there too. That's that you know, That's there's it. always some. There's always some. Uh, yeah, fun. Yeah. You know, grass is always greener sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's. Uh, yeah. But yeah. But I think. I think from a manufacturing perspective, yeah. global automakers want to be able to sell basically similar vehicles mm -hmm. in as many markets as possible. You know, That's it just right. makes money for them and it makes the most vehicles available right. to consumers. So I think the uh, the quicker we can get to a global set of yep. automotive standards, the the quicker we'll be able to see some of those vehicles. Yeah. And VW certainly has the capability to do that with with the, the you know, multiple divisions and that common MEB platform, which they're going to farm out. And if you want to buy that, so we may see other startups and other uh, organizations looking into that. You know, a lot more of these synergies and partnerships. You know, we know that. Uh, uh, GM was thinking about Rivian and they backed out and then Ford now, you know, going to you know put some money in so that they can get some of their tech and maybe mm -hmm. help them garner up to speed. But I certainly would love to see some of those overseas guys like MG and maybe Skoda and Seat or some come over here, you know, whether they will or not, who knows, but it would just be great to see some of those marketplaces. Um, any, any closing thoughts? I know we're up on the hour now and I appreciate mm -hmm. you going a little overtime with me, but you know, the, it's been a fantastic, really exhilarating conversation with you because you, you know, so much more than I do, Michael, and I'm always <laughs> well, trying to no. pick away at these, these that, smart but... brains and get intel. <laughs> Anything you want to you want to feed us uh, from a closing perspective on on your take? Well, I think it just is a fascinating time for mm -hmm. electric vehicle owners and electric vehicle enthusiasts. So it's going to be something where we see more and more vehicles now, mm -hmm. and it's it's fascinating from from my own perspective, seeing being able to test drive these cars and being able to assign. Uh, vehicles. I mean, we're going, uh, we're test driving the uh, Taken. Yeah, the mention, Taken. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it's the world premiere is actually happening here in Niagara Falls in oh, Canada. I didn't realize that. So wow. the world. Okay. So it's uh, wow. it's a global premiere. So I think the way they're doing Do you need it, a plus they're, one? they're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not far from uh, here. Yeah, it's, I know it's uh, that. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's it's interesting. So they're bringing a ton of Americans wow. over. So I think they may be doing some other. Uh, um, simultaneous launches right. in Europe and yep. and Asia, but uh, but yeah, so but it's Niagara Falls, Canada, and nice. I think they want to, to highlight that hey, yep. there's a there's a natural world out there to consider. It's mm -hmm. not all about having fun in the driver's seat, even though it's a Porsche. Right. Where they want to highlight, obviously, you can still get a lot of driving uh, performance out of it. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of driving enjoyment to be had. Yeah. But there's also more things to consider these days. Yeah. I, you know, I wish, I mean, in that note, uh, I wish, you know, I just saw the, the launch of the C8 and it's a gorgeous looking Corvette from GM, but I really mm -hmm. wish there was an electrified version of that. Like, really, yes. you know, it's a great <laughs> platform for that. Just looking at it, that, my God, it screams electrify me, please, right? So maybe GM will do that. Who knows? There are right? some whispers. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a great, it just looks like it's just a perfect vehicle to do that. So, uh, well, listen, yes. I, I appreciate, you know, your time on this. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad that uh, that you're seeing the trends change i'm glad that you're you're seeing from your business mm -hmm. that the ev is starting to you know to, to contribute and that you are noticing some of those trends that are happening um anything you want to throw out from a stats or from a trend that uh, you you wanted to say because you've got so much so many nice <laughs> graphs and stuff i wasn't sure what you wanted to throw out there but anything from a closing well it's, it's uh, i mean all of these uh, the graphs and and information yeah. we have a lot of these uh, studies that mm -hmm. are available on our site yeah. we we cover them on a regular basis uh, if you're looking for ev information autotrader.ca slash editorial mm -hmm. is where we put all of our uh, road tests all of our comparison tests all of our news that has a lot of uh, ev studies in it yep. we were just talking about uh, one today which is kind of interesting that says uh, consideration is going uh, is going up in the market for electric vehicles mm -hmm. so so we're always 
updating that with the, the latest and greatest. And I think there's going to be a lot of information. Being an enthusiast myself, we're assigning a lot of information. So even if I'm not writing it, uh, it's interesting to know a little bit of background that, uh, that I'm definitely going to be assigning um, more and more electric vehicle yeah. stories Good. to uh, to the site because that's that's really that's where a lot of the news is and that's yep. where a lot of the vehicles are going. Continue with that awareness and and thank you for mentioning the uh, you know the stats that have come out. Uh, again, you guys will have a piece out but before this show goes to air. But you know some stats about this is these are Canadian just to close the show off. But you know that one third are now considering electric vehicle and that's an interesting stat because you know just a few years ago. You would, I would say, you know, one or two out of ten. You you ask them about EVs, and they go, "Isn't that a Tesla? Like, mm. th- is that what they do?" And now you get a bit more, you know, more people responsive to that. You know, and, and two and five are considering a vehicle which is not gasoline, which is an interesting twist on that. Um, you know, so for some Canadian stats, you know, and, and why do people purchase? I mean, we talked about financial, but I mean, for me, my main motivator was the environmental impact. I just, I, I have an opportunity to to go zero emission, mm-hmm. and, and we have. Clean energy, quote unquote. I'm doing air quotes on that. Right. Uh, very low cost energy. You know, three and a half cents uh, off peak. That's you know, thirty bucks a month, as you're saying. I'm right in the wheel. I was eighty one percent want to do this for the environmental with seventy nine on gas. So we now we've seen that shift. It's not so much about the financial. It's like how can I help our environment? You know, our climate change. Um, and then from a you know from a who wants to consider this so a Canadian you know, BC is leading the way with 44 percent that are thinking about an EV and that makes sense they're very green province as you know mm-hmm. uh, with millennials driving that 18 to 34 I still think there's hope for some old folks like me, for <laughs> yeah. the boomers but but you know the technology like yeah the technology <laughs> could be scary and that could mm-hmm. be where you know ages 55 and plus are only about 24 percent thinking about it because I think some of them you know certainly some for the Model Three they go well I can't handle it just a all touch screen you know I need I'm used to the old days and uh, uh, and then you know Ontario is on the map too with 36% thinking of, of an EV so um, it's nice to see you know this is just a snippet of information that, that you were able to get that you guys are going to talk about in more detail but nice to see that that shift is happening it is it is uh, nice to see it's uh, it's interesting to see where the the industry is going because mm-hmm. it really i remember a point where it was actually a discussion point about oh do we have too much ev news you know <laughs> oh, is it something that it's that was actually new, yeah. that was actually a discussion point wow. at one time but yeah. then you can't <laughs> limit ev news right. because uh, you know, so many manufacturers are coming out with electrified right. versions you know whether it's plug-in hybrids whether it's evs you know and so it's just it's getting to the point where you're starting to see more and more of the market going that way yep Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you for that. I know we've gone over your time. I appreciate you taking some OT here for me. Again, folks, autotrader.ca for the main site. Um, is autotrader.com the, the U.S. equivalent for you guys, or is that different? Totally different. Totally different. Okay. Totally Wasn't different. Sure autotrader.ca. That, so. yes. yes. That's Perfect. the Canadian. Yes. So check those out. Even if you're not in Canada, the editorials, the, the news, as you're mentioning, the, the information that you guys are providing, and more and more our electrification is coming out. So I encourage folks to, to check that, that out, please. Um, and of course, Uh, thank you again for those who are tuning in to listen to this show i appreciate you taking the time to spend an hour or so with us on a fascinating conversation from a different perspective on the ev landscape Uh, and everybody knows how to reach me ev revolution show at gmail.com if you don't know is the email address send me an email if you like the show topics for you know suggestions for topics and all that kind of stuff and uh uh, you know, so on behalf of, you know, Michael, again, I want to say a big thank you for taking the time and uh, energy to, to talk to us. It was fascinating. And please, everybody, check out Auto Trader. And until the next time, everybody stay safe, and I'll see you later. Take Great. care. Thank you.